In this video, we're gonna be looking at part two of working in DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight page. I'm gonna teach you the stuff that you need to know and you'll probably use every time you work with audio in Resolve. And of course, when it comes to working with audio, you wanna make sure that you're recording with the best equipment. I use a lav that I have hidden on me right now to record my dialogue audio. I also use an external recorder that records 32-bit floats so your audio will never peak again. It's amazing. And if you're new here, I'm Ali. Will and I own a video production company in Toronto, Canada. We work on a lot of brands campaigns like commercials, social media videos, and we have this YouTube channel where we release weekly videos all about editing and troubleshooting in DaVinci Resolve. So to stay in the loop, subscribe to our channel. All right, let's hop back into the Fairlight page and continue. Okay, so we're in Resolve's Fairlight page, and one thing you might come across is audio recordings that only come out of the left channel, aka the left speaker, which you can verify right here. This could be because it was recorded in mono and it's on a track that's set to stereo, which is indicated by showing two here. We want this dialogue audio to be heard out of both channels. And there are a few different fixes. The easiest, in my opinion, is to just right click on the audio track here, choose change track type and mono. Okay, there we go. Our dialogue is now on a mono track playing out of the left and right speaker. Let's click on the mixer panel to open it up. So this shows our different audio tracks. You can add effects here, work on dynamics and more. Let's look at the A1 track. Now I intentionally have these two dialogue clips set to visibly different decibels to show you how normalization works, which is what we're gonna check out in just a second. I'd like these clips to be a consistent volume. In part one of this crash course, we looked at adjusting audio levels using keyframes, which is a professional and customizable approach and one that I recommend. Now I'm going to show you how to normalize your audio. Normalization quickly adjusts the volume of multiple selected audio files relative to each other to create a more consistent level of volume. It's beginner friendly and speedy, but it's not as precise as keyframing. It can be really handy if you're working on like a low budget project or a project that needs to be delivered really quickly. And I just wanna say that working with volume and normalization can get quite complex and require different steps depending on where your project will be viewed. Like if it's gonna be viewed on Netflix compared to TV, compared to YouTube. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. So let's select these two clips, right click, choose normalize audio levels. This drop down menu shows several different modes you can choose from based on your project. Let's choose true peak, which measures the loudest parts of your audio mix and then sets the loudest part to the target level you choose. Anything above zero will sound distorted. I recommend you set yours between minus six and minus three and choose independent so it adjusts the volume higher or lower based on the target level you set compared to relative, which would adjust the levels relative to all of the clips that you selected. Click normalize. Okay, and here we go. The overall volume of these tracks is more consistent. Next, let's check out the de tool. In my dialogue, the part I'm about to play for you is particularly too SC sounding for my liking. And don't know where to start, this video's for you. I'm just gonna make an in point and an out point, turn loop on. Let's go over to the mixer panel under the A1 track where it says effects. Click on the little plus icon and choose the Esser. Let's click this drop down menu, which gives us a few presets. You don't have to choose any, but I like to start with the option that's best suited for my dialogue and adjust from there. So I will choose female S. If you wanna to listen to the SC sound only that Resolve is trying to remove, you can click here. Under frequency range, I actually prefer the top range, which will address a smaller range of frequencies. The higher this amount, the more it could start to muffle your audio and your S's. So you wanna listen back and adjust this dial to find an amount that sounds like it's reduced that hissy s -y sound without making the audio sound unnatural. So let's have a listen as we adjust this dial. Videos for you. Where to start? This video's 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 for you. I think around 40 sounding good. And 
Reaction time basically means if the effect should jump into play fast, medium, or slow, I stick with medium. And I'll just point out, if you wanna set this effect back to the default, you can click this little circle arrow up here. If you wanna turn the effect off, just click on this red button. Cool, I'll close that. Okay, now I just wanna point out that if you are adding effects in the mixer, like we just did on the A1 track, that effect is gonna be applied to all of the audio on that track, meaning we just applied the de to Will's audio as well. Because he's a different person and he pronunciates words differently than me, the de settings I chose might not work so great for his audio. So if you do need the de effect to just go on specific clips, with my audio one track selected, I'll just go up to inspector and the de effect shows here. Hit the trash can to delete it off of the A1 track. Now let's click on effects. There's the de in my favorite list, right where we put it in part one. So I'll drag this effect onto my individual clip here. And now the entire A1 track will not be affected by this effect. Now let's go up to mark and choose clear in and out and open up the inspector panel. So the inspector panel makes it really easy to adjust some commonly used audio parameters like volume, effects, and more. One thing I love is voice isolation. It's amazing. It's one of the reasons I ended up switching to the studio version because it really helps easily remove distracting background noise in your audio. I made an in-depth tutorial a while back that's one of our most popular looking at how to reduce and remove annoying background noise in the free version and paid version of Resolve. And I just recreated that tutorial with the most up-to-date information. I'm gonna link it in the description below. I highly recommend you check it out. Now, I prefer to use the equalizer EQ effect that we're gonna look at coming up, but here in the inspector panel, we have quick access to a more general equalizer. Click here to turn it on. Let's select band one, which will cut the low pitch frequencies of the track we have selected on our timeline. We can also click on band four, which cuts the higher pitch frequencies. You can also manually adjust any of these as well. Next, this is a feature I love when I'm testing out different music tracks to see what's working and not working with the vibe of my project. So let's right click on our current music choice, choose reveal in media pool to easily find it, there it is highlighted in red. Right click on it and choose replace selected clip. Now I can choose a different music track, hit open, and this new music track has been replaced with the previous one. I'll just zoom into the beginning of my music here. And when you're working with music, oftentimes the track will have a few frames or a second or so of no audio in the recording before it begins. So let's just trim the blank beginning of this track and move over here, zoom out drag the end of our music track to where the end of our dialogue clip is. It snaps nicely because we have snap on that we learned about in part one. I'll zoom in here and you see this little point here, click on it and drag it inwards, which creates a linear sort of fade of the volume of your music so that it doesn't just like abruptly stop. The volume fades nicely. What I like to do is click on this point here to round out that fade more. I just find it more pleasing to the ear and I recommend you do this as well. Did I close the mixer? Let's open it back up and on the A1 track, click where it says EQ. Let's turn it on. Click on band one to cut those lower frequencies. I usually adjust mine to 100 because with dialogue, you don't need to hear the frequencies below 100. Also turn band six on and adjust it to around 14K. You can also grab any of these other band points here and press the spacebar to play through your dialogue. If you're completely confused by nodes and don't know where to start, this video is for you. If you're completely confused by nodes and don't know where to start, listen back and adjust them until you're happy with the results. Overall, it's a good practice to get used to using EQ and at the very least cutting the high and low frequencies like we just did. Another few random things I wanna show you are, let's say you've put a whole bunch of effects and done a whole bunch of things to your audio track and you decide you wanna remove some stuff or you wanna remove everything you've done, you can right click on your audio track, choose remove attributes and check mark any of them to get rid of them. Ooh, and I should also show you this because I use it every day. If you have cuts between your audio and you have two audio tracks side by side, sometimes this can introduce like random abrupt sounds or sound changes. Let's have a listen. You'll know what to do. Welcome back to another video. 
Did you hear it? There's like a k sort of sound in between me and Will's clip. Now, in some cases, to remove this, you'd want to trim the audio back on one of the clips a bit, but adding a crossfade can do the trick by right-clicking and I choose add six frames crossfade. Now, sometimes that's too long of a crossfade. You can drag this fade in or out. I drag it in on both sides to make these two audio clips flow together. You'll know what to do. Welcome back to another video. Okay, that noise is now gone and those clips sound seamless together. Okay, the end. There you go. Thanks for checking this video out. I hope you have a lovely day and we will see you in another one.